Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this commentary. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm going to comment on a video, even though I was going to give it a miss. And somebody said to me, well, look, don't, don't always go for this philosophy and don't go for science. And just look at, a, look at a human factor for a change. And this is why I said, okay, well, let's take this one then and do it, even though it is probably the most idiotic, most stupid, most everything. I mean, the, the word idiot was, I think, invented exactly for this occasion. It's, it's really... I, now, Imran, is, I, I, he, he's not a bad person, okay? He, I know him for a couple of years, and, and he used to be quite a nice guy, and, but now it seems that the Islam virus is securely lodged in his brain. Now that Hamza is, I don't know, has had access to his brain, Subur has had access to his brain, now he's, he's completely lost. He's, he's completely had it. There, there is no rational thinking left in this poor guy. And he, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this video. I'm, I'm just going to let it run and then comment a bit and, and then in the meantime speed it up a bit so that you don't have to listen to everything all the time. So see what you make of it. So guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you a very interesting story. A story I've told before but I haven't told in a while. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to be sharing the story with you and I think the story has a very uh, deep moral lesson for not moral lesson, but a very deep <laughs> general lesson for us. To okay. Uh, all right. So this is going to be a story uh, which he has, and he's going to tell us a story, and he's going to tell us a story which has a moral, well, not a moral, but it, it's got a moral lesson, but actually not a moral lesson. So, okay, I think you can already sort of guess in what direction this is going, all right? Take, and it's going to lead to the discussion I want to have today, which is how to... He is going to have a discussion today with himself. Just he and himself and his sock and his microphone, they're going to have a discussion. Win any debate against an atheist or how to beat any atheist in a debate. Oh, okay. So this isn't going to be an instruction manual. It's like a guidance how to win any debate with an atheist. All right. Now, years ago, I told him what an atheist actually is. It's just a person who does not believe gods or goddesses exist. That's it. It's just a, a not believing something. And yeah, I don't know why and how, but somehow people have corrupted his brain to the extent that he does not know what an atheist actually is. And that an atheist is just somebody, if you don't have a theist, there is no atheist, all right? It's, it's a reaction to something, to somebody. It's the reaction to a set of claims which I reject. And that is it. So if, if the theist would either not be a theist or would shut up, I, there, there would be nothing. I mean, you, you don't see hundreds of videos on YouTube about a dragonism, you know, because people don't run around. They don't run from door to door and, and tell people, well, you need to believe in the dragon and the dragon demands of you that you eat, I don't know, wear green stuff and, and eat only broccoli or something like this. No, there is no such thing. There is nobody who builds huge towers reminding you of the dragons with, with huge speakers reminding you that you need to pray to the green dragon or the, um, the, the, the towers with the huge noise-making bells that remind you that you need to pray. No, there is no such thing about dragons. There is no such thing about atheists because there is, there's just a reaction. So we don't, we don't do anything. We don't actively put up stalls and, and put up anything. And the funny thing is that he does not know this. He does not, or he's forgotten it, or he, he, he has rejected it, or he's banned it out of his brain. He pretends like we are really a group of people who go around trying to you know, convince others and everybody has to do what we do. I don't give a continental damn which God you worship, but do it privately so that I don't need to suffer from this, that I don't need to worry about this, that you don't come to me and expect me to believe what you believe and do what you do. I do not want to bang my head on the floor five times a day. I don't care which God demands this. Just leave me alone with this. That's how easy it is. So the story goes something like this. There's a man who, from a 
work perspective is doing brilliant. You know, he's doing, he's, he's topping his company, he's coming out on top, he's, you know, his boss is impressed with him, so much so that his boss offers him, you know, a huge promotion, gives him a new house, a new car, you know, a villa, literally a massive house, and he's really, you know, making the most of life. So what this man does is he moves to his new house with his family and things are going great. Come Monday morning, it's time to go back to work. He gets ready, leaves his house, walks down the street, and as he's walking down the street, and by the way, his house is right next to his company now, so it's just literally a two-minute walking distance. As he's walking down the street, he hears a growling sound from behind him. He hears some barking, you know, really loud growls and barks coming from right behind him. And as he turns around and looks behind him, he sees a huge, massive black dog running towards him, and there's saliva dripping out of his dog's mouth, and he's racing towards him. So what this guy does is obviously fight or flight, turns around quickly behind the car, runs back towards his house, quickly opens the door, jumps in, slams the door, and just makes it in time. And the dog's just outside the door, just growling, and then finally walks away, you know, and he saves himself. So he's relieved, spends the day at home, next morning gets ready for work, leaves the house again. Guess what happens? As he's walking down the road, the same dog chases him. He hears a growling again, the barking again, and the dog is just running towards him. And then once again, he runs back into his house, shuts the door, and stays home. Now, this pattern repeats itself over the next couple of days, even the next two weeks. Every single day, he tries to leave his house, but the dog just attacks him or tries to attack him. And each time, he makes it away from the dog and gets back into his house. And eventually, just out of the sheer fear of the dog, he stops going to work. He stops working, uh, you know, he starts drinking, he starts smoking, he starts doing recreational drugs. Eventually, his family leaves him, and now he's by himself. He has a lot of money. He's blowing money on, you know, pizza takeaways and alcohol. And eventually, one day, you know, he gets to the point where he's lying on the floor. He hasn't had a bath for three weeks. You know, he's smelling. You know, there's food running around him. He's drunk. You know, he just smoked his last spliff maybe 15 minutes ago, and he thinks, you know what? I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. You know, so he gets up. You know, he couldn't care anymore. You know, he has no more care in the world. Leaves his house, walks down the street, and he hears the growl again. He hears those barks again, and he knows the dog's just chasing him. He's running up towards him. But this time, he just doesn't move. He stays there. He says, "I, I just can't care anymore. I've, I've lost all care in the world. What's he gonna do? Bite me? Kill me?" The dog chases him, and he hears the dog getting closer and closer and closer. And eventually, the dog latches onto his leg, and he feels the jaws of the dog like just closing on his leg. And he's closing his eyes and he's squinting. He can feel the pressure of the jaw, but he doesn't move. And eventually, something happens. Within a few seconds, in his mind, and he's thinking, "Well, I should be feeling some pain. You know, I should be feeling blood, warm blood trickle down my leg." But it's not happening. But the dog, the dog's still clamping down on his leg. The jaws, he can feel the jaws of the dog pressing down his leg. It's a big dog. And within a few seconds, the dog lets go, comes in front of him, rolls over to his back, and just puts his paws up. You know, like dogs put their paws up just when they want to get pet or when they want something to stroke them. It's a big dog. But he's thinking, he's really, you know, bewildered as to what's happened. The dog bit me, but there's no blood. You know, there's no pain. Sure, I felt the pressure of the dog's jaws, but there's nothing. And then he looks at the dog's mouth, and he realizes that the dog has no teeth. The dog has no teeth. And then it dawns upon him that all of everything he gave up, everything he lost, and by the way, he got fired as well. Everything he lost was because of his irrational fear of a dog that had no teeth. Now, this is a, it's a brilliant story, and obviously you can draw many lessons, but the way I'm... No, it's not a brilliant story. <laughs> Don't you hate it when, you know, you go to a movie and after the first few minutes you know the whole storyline? Don't you hate it when somebody tells you a story and after the first few words you know exactly the whole story? You know where it's going to go, you know how it's going to end. This is... This is stupid, okay? Everything in this story is really stupid. Now, it starts off by saying, well, the guy leaves the house, he hears the dog coming up behind him, so you can hear the growl, but then he turns around and runs back into the house. Yeah, but hang on, if, if the dog is behind him, he's running straight at the dog. So that's not really logical, but that's besides the point. I mean, now, the thing, and the funny thing is, if, if you listen to what I said in the beginning, this is the same, it's exactly this. I, if, if he says now that the toothless dog is the atheist, I don't chase the, the, the Muslim. I don't chase this guy. He made this video without me telling him to do this. He made this video without, I mean, I haven't spoken to this bloke in years. I, so why is he making this video telling me that I am a toothless dog when I don't attack other people I go for the arguments. I go and, and listen to what they have to say. If they don't tell me anything, I don't have anything to debunk or refute or rebut or ridicule. So if you would just keep quiet, nothing would happen. But here he is making this video and just being an idiot, telling people that atheists chase people and bite them. No, quite the opposite. I want people to engage with them in a dialogue. There's nothing violent about a dialogue. I just want to go and ascertain what it is that they are believing. I want to ascertain what it is that, that makes them believe. I want to understand because if there is something here, then I want to know about this because then it's important. But if they don't tell me anything you know, substantial, what is it that I should do? If they can't have, you know, provide any kind of backup for their claims, then what is the point? then I am not going to believe what they believe. So, phew. Thinking here is that the, this dog in this story represents atheism. Yeah. Atheism has no teeth. You fear it from a distance, or some people do. You look at it from a distance and you think, oh my God, how am I going to deal with this? Oh my God, my faith is going to be rocked. What am I going to do? This, this atheist movement, new atheism, it's marching our way, you know, it's going to take over everything. <laughs> This is crazy. 
This is this is indeed a phobia because there's the, the atheists are not marching. As a, all, all I'm asking for is just some some kind of rational reasoning, some some rational thinking, some critical thinking. All I'm asking is for some sort of substantiation for your claims. I don't want to take over anything. I, if if somebody needs a god to get through the day or a goddess or something, why would I care? It's none of my business. If you need a god to get you through the day, well, so be it. I don't give a continental damn. It's only when you come to me and you say to me, well, I'm going to kill you unless you do exactly what I told you to do. Well, hang on, then, then, well, then it gets a bit different. And that is the point that people need to understand. It's, it's not that because I don't believe gods exist that I go and attack other people. No, this is not. You see, his thinking is, is only along the lines of Islam. He thinks, well, Islam does X, Y, and Z. So the, the non-thinking or non-believing person, not thinking, non-believing person is, is exactly like this. So their non-thinking is the equivalent of, why am I saying thinking? My, their non-believing, their non-believing is the equivalent of my believing. And it is not. And this is the point that I, I don't know why, why he goes through it. I, I don't understand what his position is. I don't know why he comes to the position that he is in. Because none of it is true. He, don't have, he doesn't have to be afraid. And if his faith is being rocked by just a couple of questions, well, excuse me, sir, then there's something wrong with your faith. Not me for asking questions. If I cannot ask you questions without you immediately shaking and shivering and quaking in your boots because you can't answer them because your faith is so, so weak or something, that's not my fault. Then you need to talk to your God that he comes up with some better ideas and, and, and better, you know, come, come up with some, some substantial arguments instead of just continuously relying on you to think and come up with something that will somehow substantiate his existence. If he can't do that, well, there's something wrong with you and your belief, not with me for asking you questions. But what we fail to realize is that atheism, just like that dog in the story, has no teeth. And it's correct. I don't have any, I don't have any arguments for not believing gods exist. I can only say, look, I, I, don't believe, I have no good reason to believe gods or goddesses exist. So I don't. That is all I can do. I can only tell you, look, I, I'm, all right, I'm, I'm, I cherish truth. I, I think truth is an honesty, truth, honesty, integrity, high level of ethics, things like that. That is the most important thing. If I can trust somebody because I know that, that he will not lie to me, if he will, that he will not deceive me, that is worth a lot. But then that's a totally different story. Then that, that means that, I am giving you a reason to be truthful. And if you can't do that, well, then there's something wrong with you, not with me. Just because I want to be as truthful as possible. I want to believe as many things that are true as possible and as few things that are not true. If you tell me, okay, I believe this and you tell me that, well, here's the facts, you're wrong. I will change my mind. You will not. I don't know how much evidence you need. What would it take to change your mind about this God? How much evidence have I given to you and you still believe this funny God? And I, I wonder what it really takes. What does it take for you to change your mind? Now, the funny thing is, this th theists are constantly asking me, well, what evidence would it take for you to believe this God exists? And I also tell them, I don't know. I don't have a clue because I don't know what a God is. I don't know what a God is capable of giving me. I, don't, I can't demand evidence that a God is not capable of giving, providing. So how can I ask a God for evidence when I don't know what a God is? But it's much easier. What would a theist need in evidence, the form of evidence to change their mind? I want you to let this sink in for a second, and I'm going to justify mm, this as we go along. But I'm going to give another requires no sinking in story today. I want you to imagine the dog and its teeth, or the bite of the dog, as a debate with an atheist. Okay. Now, for you to have a debate, for you to bite, you need to have teeth. But 
atheism hasn't got those teeth, and therefore it cannot debate. Now I'm going to explain what I mean here, but I'm just... I react. I react to your claims. I don't debate atheism. I don't go to people and say, I want to debate you on atheism. No. I, I want to ask you, why is it that you believe in gods? And can you explain why you believe what you believe? That's it. I'm just trying to get the point across at the moment, right? We so got it. Essentially what I'm getting at we got here it. is that as soon as you adopt atheism, you ascribe to atheism, you claim atheism, no. you claim to be an atheist. You no, 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 no. It's, it's, a, it's a thinking process. It's a, it's, a, it's a logical thinking process. It's critical thinking. You, you, you find that there's something wrong with the story and you think about, well, why is it wrong? And then you go through the different options and depending on what personality you are, you either come up with an answer or you don't. If you come up with an answer, well, that means you stop believing. And if you can't, well, then you leave it and then you remain a theist because it is more important for you not to think and to stay and have an answer, which is God did it for every single question instead of being more rational and accepting that there are some questions where you will not have answers. And if you are okay with uncertainty, then you can accept being a non-believer, then you don't need to be uh, you know, in, in, in the group of people who worship some god for whatever reason. Adopt this ideology, philosophy, outlook, worldview, whatever you want to call it. I know atheists have an issue when I call it a worldview. Of course we have an issue when you call it a worldview, because it isn't a worldview. I mean, if you make false claims, of course I have an issue with that. I don't check every time I do something, does it fit into my not believing gods exist? However, you do. You, before you do anything, before you have a piece of cake, you think, am I allowed to eat this? Does my worldview, does my God, does my doctrine, does my ism allow me to do this? I don't have that. I don't have to check with anybody. It's up to me to decide. It's up to me to decide whether I can do something or not do something. Does it match up to my standards, which are a lot higher than those of Islam? Because you need to accept things, stupid things like talking ants and, and incest and things like that because they are part of your worldview. You cannot argue against them. I can. Petro, call it whatever you want. As soon as you adopt this way, it removes the teeth that you need to even be able to debate someone. Right? I don't need to debate, I just ask you questions. I just ask you, this is what I did when, whenever I came on, on the live stream. I asked, okay, why is it that you do this? Okay, I told you. Am I created? No, there were no uh, supernatural beings detected. That's what I said. And you feel threatened by that? And therefore, the real question I want to address today, or the real way of beating an atheist in a debate, is to realize that they're, no, they're in no position to debate. You cannot beat an atheist in a debate. That is impossible because of your claims, because you claim that there is a God out there for which you have no evidence. You claim that this is the God of Islam who says that it's the most perfect God, the best of creators, the best of this and this and this and this. And then when you go and apply this, you find that this is wrong. And then what? You can't do anything. Your God's not going to help you. So you need to suddenly come up with arguments for why your God is so great when in reality clearly shows it's not. And this is the problem. So I don't need teeth. I don't need to debate anything. You come to me with your claims. I will go and examine them and tell you what's wrong with them. And that's how easy it is. And the real question we have to ask ourselves is then, well, should we debate them or should we do something else? Which I'm going to Of course, you can leave it. If you are scared, leave it. You are too scared to come on the gin and tonic show. You are a coward. Like people like Mansour or, or, or Hamza or Sabor or, or anybody on, on, on this, this Esidawa or in AIRA or on the LDM, the London Dawa movement, the GDM, the global Dawa movement. You're all cowards because you cannot handle this. And I can understand this because coming on the gin and tonic would mean a lose situation for you. You cannot win. So it must be a lose situation for you. It's impossible to do anything else. And that's why you know that you can't come there because all we're going to do is we're going to ask you questions and you know that you don't have the answers. And that is why you run away and you hide, you cry on your mommy's shoulder and that's it. That's all you can do. And then you make videos like this one saying, well, you can't debate because you need teeth. Ah, that's, that's so pathetic. Explain in a second. So when I say that atheism is in no position to debate, what do I mean? 
I'm going to quickly explain this. This is relevant from many different perspectives, but I'm going to share a few things. Now, when we talk about debates, there are some fundamental tenets that need to be in place. <laughs> Actually, you know that I looked this up because a lot of people, especially Muslims, is like like a lot of people. I, I don't know why they they don't say ask. They say ax. I axed you. I don't know why. And and this is the, Muslims are. I don't know why they make these mistakes. It's not a tenant. A tenant is somebody who rents your flat. All right. It's a tenant. It's a central arguing point or <laughs> it's, it's one of the central um, points that you adhere to if you are inside a group or in, inside an ism or something. That's very different, tenant and tenant. For us to debate anyone or have a debate in the first place on whatever topic that may be, some of those things are, well, there has to be something called truth, right? There has to be something that we call truth that's objective and real in some sense. Well, this, this thing with the objective, there's very little objective, and, and, and in, in Islam, definitely not. And this, this true thing, this is very, very, it's, it's a very fluid sort of term. Truth, if, if you say something that you are convinced of, where you have no information to the contrary, you are speaking the truth, you're not lying. But it could be that you're wrong. Even though you were telling the truth, it, it, you could still be wrong. And this is the point. You, you don't have this objective truth with a capital T. There are some things, yeah, sure, because here on this planet, if I drop something, it will fall towards the center of the earth. It will not suddenly decide otherwise and fly up to the ceiling. Okay, yeah. But what, what is the value of this? Is, is there any value in having a, this, this, this truthism or the... This is just a tautology. This doesn't make any sense. And therefore, when you debate, you are discussed, you are actually debating and trying to get to the bottom of some form of truth. So there has to be truth. Number two, not only does there have to be some sort of objective truth out there, but there has, that truth has to be valuable. That truth has to have value, and that truth has to be meaningful. It has to have meaning. No. That's another thing. And the third thing is, well, we as human beings, those that are engaging in the debate, have to be able to, or have to have truth-bearing rational faculties. What? Cognitive faculties and abilities which allow us to attain and engage with this truth. What are you talking about? You, you're talking about truth, so something must be correct. Then you say it has to be, have meaning. Well, that, that is the meaning. This is the same thing. You know, if something is correct, that is the, the, the value and the meaning of this being correct. And then you need something that can recognize this truth. Well, that's the brain. So you're talking about three things, which actually is all the same thing, which is all inside your brain. And that is it. So why are you saying there's three things? Which is meaningful. Now, what I'm going to posit here is, well, on atheism and naturalism... <sighs> naturalism. Now... <clears throat> Me not believing gods exist does not automatically imply that I also automatically believe that uh, nature is all there is. I mean, normally, yeah, sure, but it's not the same thing. You cannot equivocate. You, you, can't, you can't say, okay, um, it's, it's, um, there, there is a link. You, you, you cannot go and say, all right, you, because... You believe there's no gods, then nature cannot be created by gods, and because there's only gods or nature, then it must be one or the other. No, there are other possibilities. It, it doesn't always go this way. So, no, I don't know if I am a, a naturalist or something like this. Maybe I am, but I've never looked into this. So just because I don't believe gods exist, does not believe I believe something else. I mean, I made a whole video on this explaining this. You cannot account for any of these three things. Let me repeat that. On atheism or naturalism, you cannot account for any of these three fun... Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I have a brain. Now, if I, if I don't have a brain, nothing makes any sense. So what I do is I say, well, I exist. Nature around me exists. I have a brain. And I'm listening to this video and I'm having a discussion with somebody. So those are the things that I sort of presuppose or which I say these are axiomatic. So this, this is my, my basis, my foundation. But 
without these, it does not make sense to do anything. Then, then we have nihilism or whatever, then you, you can stop doing everything. But you cannot say, because I have a brain, I cannot account for the brain because I only have the brain. I need the brain to make sense of the brain. That is correct. But I am presupposing that I have a brain. And it doesn't matter whether you call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 or 55. It doesn't matter. It's always down to the brain. And if you are now saying, well, you can't have a brain without a God, well, so be it then that, that is what you want and then we can stop this whole discussion. You are right. There's no point in debating it if you are saying, I cannot think without a God. That's stupid. Then we can only look at your, um, your criteria and, and, and look what, what your demands are and that's it. But you're right. If, if you're saying it needs a God to have truth and a brain, well, then, then we're done. Fundamental tenets of any debate or discussion. Truth, the value and meaning, meaningfulness of truth, and the ability to attain truth or arrive at truth you can't account for this and this is the fundamental problem i mean think about it now think about it what do you have you have an old book that tells you you can beat your wife and that you can keep slaves and rape them okay now th this is the old book this is what it tells you now are you going to do that no you don't you're not going to marry off your six-year-old kid six-year-old daughter to a 50-year-old man you're not going to do that but if you look at the, the value of this old um, text, that is what it tells you. So that is what you have. What I have is just me. What, what I have is my brain. What I have is the interaction, the social interaction. What I have is society. I have culture. I have all these things that tell me, okay, this is good, this is bad. How others react how, how the, the entire society, how they feel towards things. And then we, we say, okay, it's better to be alive than to be dead. It is better to not feel pain than to feel pain. So we have a couple of you know, parameters that we agree on, which are, um, if, if you want to call it objective or ultimate or whatever you want to call them. But what you are doing now is saying, well, you, you, you can't account for this because you don't have a God. That is ridiculous. On atheism and naturalism, if you really go down to, to, the, to the depth of things, you realize, well, there is no ultimate meaning to life. There is no meaning behind anything. Of Therefore, course there is. You give meaning. You are the one who decides what you're going to do. You need to go and decide. If, if, if you don't want to do anything, well, you don't do anything. Then you don't contribute. But I can look back and say, I have contributed. I have I've given financial gain to companies. I have made the lives of, of countless humans a lot better. I, ha I have provided services for a lot of human beings who appreciate them. So this is the meaning that I have given to my life. This is just me and myself who've done that. What you are doing, and this is the problem, you are being selfish. You don't care about others. You only care about yourself. You only, because you're a Muslim, your brain says, I need to look out for myself. I need to get as many points as possible. Now, in Islam, there are a couple of interactions that say, if you are good to somebody doing this, you get points. There are some points where you, you, you gain them by being good to orphans. by doing. So there's a couple of things which are beneficial for society in general. The same is for me. But there are the majority of things which are only good for you. These are the things that you are accumulating point, where you are at the center of everything. I don't have that. I don't have this selfish, selfish outlook that you must have as a Muslim because you are accumulating the points so that you can get to heaven sooner than everybody else. This is the goal. You need to shorten the queue that it takes for you to get to heaven because you can't wait to get there. I don't have this. I can be good because I am good, just because I am good for the, just for the sake of being good. And you don't have that. You can be bad and your God will still forgive you. I don't have this. I have a bad conscience and nobody's going to take that away from me. What's the meaning behind truth? What is truth to begin with? Let's just quickly engage with another point, I think, which is more even more relevant, even for the sake of debate and discussion, if we were to grant the atheist that you can account for truth, and in some way, shape or form, you can give that truth meaning and value, well, how do you account for your ability to attain that truth, or engage with that truth as a rational human being? How do you account for your truth-bearing rational faculties? A huge problem for atheism and that. 
This is not a problem at all. Just because you call something truth-bearing rational faculties, I call it a brain. So just using fancy words to describe something doesn't make it any better or worse or whatever. So truth-bearing rational faculties of, are, are mundane. Okay, this is basic thinking. So what I can do is exactly the same as what you can do, but a lot more and a lot better. So my moral standard, my moral level is much higher than yours. Because you cannot go and condemn incest. Because it's built into the dogma, it's built into the doctrine. I can. Actualism. Huge problem. Because no, remember, all they can appeal to is evolution. That just... Ugh, evolution. What is evolution? That's just it, it, how different species um, occur or how do they come about. That's all it is. Just because you have a silly book that tells you that one guy was, was handcrafted by a god, you reject the whole branch of science that is 100% correct. Where there's a lot of things where we still don't know, but what we do know, we know it is correct. And what we don't know, well, then we're going to still look at it. Well, we're not going to stop looking the way that you do. You're just going to sit there, bang your head on the floor five times a day and say, everything is great, I don't need evolution, I've got my God. He created Adam and therefore I don't need evolution. And you reject reality. You reject the truth. You reject all these things. And then if I come to you and say, well, actually, there is some truth in this, you say, no, there's not, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. This is the same as like, what does the leaning tower of pizza taste like? You know, it's a nonsensical question that you are asking. What is the point of evolution? Just like our hands, our fingers evolved, our rational faculties evolved too. But therefore, our rational faculties are not geared towards truth, but they're geared towards survival. It's not about truth value, it's about survival value. And as, you know, people... How, how does survival negate truth? How does that work? If I go and find something that, that somehow helps in my survival, if I'm going to use my fingers to eat food, and I look at the food and I say, yeah, this is true, it is true that the hot food is better than cold food. Now, that, that might be true, might not be true, I don't know. But how does that impact survival? How can I not tell the truth if I am fighting for survival? How, how does that work? If, if I go and interact with another human being and, and I want to recreate or procreate or whatever it is, how is that not true? So I'm doing both at the same time. What you are doing is you're trying to categorize this and label this so that it doesn't, doesn't somehow match or fix or, or doesn't, doesn't work together. That is wrong. And, and the academics have shown time and time again, Truth, true beliefs, as well as false beliefs, both can adequately re result in survival in a given relative situation. Yes, sure. So therefore, there's and no real need for our truth, truth-bearing faculties to develop. And in other words, there's no, there's no reason for us to trust our truth-bearing rational faculties on atheism and naturalism. So At what? best, all you can do is say, well, uh, I'm skeptical about them. Well, that leaves you nowhere. You can't move from there. And if anyone's more interested in... Move where? Where do you want to move? You're already there. You are a, a, a working member of the society. You are part of a group of, of a human species that is trying to make the best of everything. Now, I think we've done a really bad job of damaging um, of our environment, of running after this, this Anglo-American financial system, which I think is, is, is crap. There's a lot of things that we're doing wrong. And we can fix them, but we need to fix them. But we can't wait for your God to do that. We have to do that. Your God is going to do zilch. And you're just going to sit there and say, oh, it's just a test. And then you're going to watch and, and, and see the whole of, of mankind go down the drain because you don't care, because you don't care whether you survive or not. You just want to go to heaven. That's crazy. Really, studying this particular point in more detail, I, I will refer you to Hamza's book, The Divine Reality. Of oh, please. Hamza Tzotz is an idiot. He's a total fool. Everything that he has ever done, I have refuted and I've shown and what, what an idiot he is and, and I've ridiculed it. He lied so many times, it's unbelievable. And now you come with Hamza Tzotzis and his book. Next thing is going to be Subur and his book. Those are fools. And if you attach yourself to them, you're going to be just as fool. Well, you already are. I mean, look at this video, please. A chapter on rationality. Uh, I think it's called... 
uh, the adversaries of reason. That's the chapter in his book. Brilliant chapter, it covers it in this argument, this or this point about rational faculties or accounting for rational faculties on atheism in a lot more detail. Definitely read that. And there's a lot of academic references there for you to go through too. But I'm just, I'm just trying to get a point across here. So just to summarize again, what I'm saying is that on atheism and naturalism, you cannot account for those fundamental tenets of any debate. Truth, the meaningful and, uh, nature of truth or the uh, truth being valuable and that we have the ability to attain and engage with this truth, our, that we have truth-bearing rational faculties. And another fourth point I want to quickly mention. Ah, uh, so it's three points. And here's the fourth one. <laughs> yes. Is an ethical point. Because remember, any debate, although this is a side point, any debate, a human debate, and I assume my only human being. There's a non-human debate? With, do you debate with aliens or what? Things are those that engage in debates. <clears throat> Any human debate requires a level of ethical conduct. So we have to sort of have a gauge on what's ethical. We have to have a gauge on what's objectively right and wrong, good or bad. You know, so we can get to the point where we can have, have ethical sort of uh, tenets of a, any given debate. So all of these things, you cannot make sense of an atheism. You cannot... So why is it that if, if you come to the gin tonic show, we let you talk? You've got your platform, we, do, we don't buzz you, we don't mute you, we don't kick you, we don't do any of that. Yet when I am on a Muslim show, they talk over me, they mute me, they kick me, they do all sorts of things because they can't handle it. Now why don't you think about that? Why don't you think about reality? Why don't you look at the facts? How many, I mean just, just look at reality. How, in, in the last month, in this, this month of, of July, okay, how many Muslims have attacked, maimed, killed, done all sorts of things to other Muslims, to other people, every single day, every day, every day? How many Muslims have conducted any act of violence in the month of July? And now count how that applies or whether this applies to atheists, to people who don't believe God exists. And there is a stark contrast but this is reality and you can't handle reality you only think that well my god is going to fix everything no it doesn't this is the problem what what you are doing is you you're going into this thing yeah you don't know what truth is so you can't talk to us man i know what truth is and i value truth more than you do because you lie Hamza lies, Subur lies, Mansur lies. You all lie to people. You deceive people. That is the problem. And then you say, ah, oh, you atheists are the ones who are attacking us. That's bullshit. Provided an object or a true account for an atheism. So if you can't do that, then well, the question to ask is, is, is atheism or an, an atheist in any position to debate, to start with? See, brothers and sisters and friends, a lot of times what we do is, you know, like the last three minutes, if I substitute the face with Hamza Tortoise's face, it's the same identical thing. He copies Hamza Tortoise. I mean, this, I know all this, this um, whatever he says, this truth-bearing rational faculty. This is Hamza Tortoise. This is his wording. I know his wording. I mean, I've, I've spent years with this guy. And this is exactly what he says. The same, this brother, sisters, and friends, everything that he does, the, the, the tone, everything he is copying Hamza. He's spent too much time with Hamza. Hamza has got in his brain. He's, he's corrupted his brain and destroyed it. And now what you see is, is like, a, like a ruin. It's like a, like a building in Berlin after, after a bomb raid. There's, there's just a couple of pillars left and, and the rest is just smoldering ruins and that's all there is just some debris oh, it's so sad we give atheism and I'm saying atheism as opposed to atheists as I've mentioned before you know we have to have a level of respect for every single human being because they're all creation of God but atheism we give too much respect sometimes oh really now I, I, you, you're just contradicting yourself you just said we have to respect everything but we're giving too much respect which is it you're just saying everything is a creation of God. Now, if I was created by a God, now, why, why don't you think this through? Oh, he can't. He can't, you know. He says every human being, like, I'm created by this God. 
Now, I don't believe. Now, while I was being created, while this God had me in, in his hands, because this is what, what the, the story is, and he's created me from clay, dust, water, from nothing, from another human being. You know, there's, there's different materials. While, he, while this God is busy creating me, he already knows while he's creating me that I'm going to be a, an atheist. I'm, I'm not going to believe this God exists, all right? Now, what does he do? Does he change his mind or does he give me the ability to change my mind? No, because this God knows everything, is in knowledge of everything. So it already knows what is going to happen to me at the end of the day, whether I die as a non-believing human being who needs to go to hell for eternal punishment. So this, God's crea this God creates me anyway, knowing full well that I'm going to go to hell. Now, if this would be a merciful God, it wouldn't do that. And if it is an all-powerful God, it wouldn't have to. And if it is the best of creators, it can make me in a way so that I don't. So we have a huge logical dilemma here. None of this applies to what our Imran here is thinking. But Imran is too stupid to follow this, this very short logical line of reasoning. Right? We, therefore, by extension, the atheist who's carrying his atheism, we give them too much respect from the perspective that as soon as they come to you and they say, I want to debate with you, I want to debate God's existence, we're like, yeah, sure, let's have a debate about God's existence. Right? But why even go there? Why give them the position of judge? Because essentially that's what we're doing. When we're debating with them, we're saying, here is an argument for God's existence. Now you be the judge, whether you accept it or reject it, assuming that they have the qualifications to be a judge in the first place. But as we've highlighted, they don't. Well, sorry, that's what the Quran says. The Quran says debate with them and do it in the best possible manner. That's what chapter 16, 125 tells you. So all you have to do is follow the Quran. If you don't want to right, follow the Quran, well then don't. They, they, their worldview renders them in a, to, or reduces them down to a place where they can never be a judge from this perspective. So why? I've just shown you. It's very easy. It's logical thinking. It's not being judgmental. I just look at your claim and I go and evaluate whether this claim makes sense. So all I'm doing is investigating your claim. And I'm going and inspecting and looking at, at what it is that you're presenting to me. And I'm saying, no, I reject this because it's illogical. No, I reject this because it's a false claim. No, I reject it because it doesn't match reality. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Now, if you can't handle that, well, then it's not my fault. Then it's the fault of your God. Go and complain to your God. Not go, don't come complain to me. Even debate them in the first place. I would argue the best thing to do or the way to beat any atheist in a debate now, I know there's a bit of rhetoric here, right? But the way to be any atheist in a debate <clears throat> is to firstly recognize that they're in no position to debate, and secondly, to, in the most loving and compassionate way possible, outline this to them and to remind them of, the, of this. And the reason we want to do this is not out of spite, but out of getting them to realize how their worldview reduces them to a position where they can't even, they're not, they, can't even put the, they can't even stand up and debate someone, essentially. They're in no position to do this. And when they try to do this, they look really silly. Perfect prime example is Mr. Richard Dawkins. <coughs> how many times do we see Richard Dawkins attack religion? You know, how many times do we see Professor Dawkins say this is evil and this is bad when atheism doesn't give him, give him any objective? Hey, yeah, but I don't understand. Do you think that slavery is a good thing? Do you think that raping girls is a good thing? Do you think that beating women is a good thing? Well, I think it's evil. Now, I'm, I'm sure that if I come and ask you and ask you these straight questions, you will say, yes, this is evil. But the problem is it's in this book. And that's why you start arguing. And that's why you start saying, yeah, but it's not really this and it's not that. And you got it all wrong and you don't speak Arabic and you, you, you're taking it out of context. And of course, you're an Islamophobe. That's stupid. So it is evil. It remains evil. Slavery is evil. And just because you call it something else doesn't make it any better. It is evil. Standards for morality. You know, and then it just makes you laugh. It literally does. It just makes, you, it makes them seem so silly. So, so then, if it makes me look so silly, why are you such a coward then? 
Why can you not come around and have a chat with me? Why are you too much of a coward to do that if it seems so silly? If it seems so easy, why don't you? Why is it that you need to run and hide and then you, you just sort of peek behind your, your mummy's dress and then you say, you can't debate me, you don't know what you're doing. And then you quickly go back and hide again. <laughs> we remind the atheists from this perspective that look, your worldview is putting you in a position where you can't even account My for the worldview. basic tenets of debate. So I'm not going to debate you because it's pointless. What I'm going to do instead, let me give you the message of Islam. Let me show <laughs> I can't show you that my God exists. I can't show you that anything that I believe is true. I can't back up anything that I claim. But let me tell you about it anyway, without any back, without any evidence, without any substantiation, without being able to justify any of it. But let me tell you about this. There's this brilliant God who tells you that if you don't do what he does, he's going to torture you for eternity. But he loves you and he's merciful and he's everything, but he's going to torture you for eternity. Come on, man, get out of here. Stop talking shit. How can anybody in their right mind tell me I can't debate, so you need to just listen to me. And you need to accept what I'm telling you, even though I cannot substantiate anything that I'm going to tell you. Just shut up and listen. Oh my God, this guy is stupid. Share the message of Islam with you, which, by the way, comprehensively, addresses the human being and comprehensively provides an account for all human faculties and abilities. You know, it provides... Your God can't even add a third and a third and two thirds and a half and an eighth doesn't know what the hell is going on there. And then you're telling me that it can address the human, the, what, you, what did you say, humanity as a whole or something? Get out of here. This is stupid. Come on, how can you, how can you... No, okay, yeah. All right, I, I think I'm going to provides cut an account this off. For ethics. No it provides an here. account for truth. It provides an account for the value of truth, meaning, everything. Let me share that with you, because I think... No, I've, no I, I'm, don't, don't share this with me. I know, I've heard this for, I don't know, for, for, for 20, no, 15 years now. I've had enough. I've, I don't need this sharing. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is, if there's anything else that is, I don't know, important, no, it can't be important, if there's anything useful... Or anything I will put this into the end of the video otherwise I'm gonna leave it here see you next time <laughs> this is really oh. okay but I agreed to do this so I pulled it through there you go cheers I think that's what you're really in need of and again we don't want to there's, there shouldn't be any arrogance here we're just simply trying to help our fellow human being in... no arrogance no you are stupid and I will help you but there's no arrogance <laughs> okay right. bye <laughs> In, come, in coming to the truth so that they put themselves in a position where they actually can carry themselves as a human being. As a